I inherited a question from my dear friend Susan Manwaring last week, and I, I was delighted about it. But my first caveat is this is not Susan's presentation, but it is her question. My second caveat, and I want to thank uh, Lorna for this, is I got up this morning and I put on my three-piece suit. And I got, and I saw on Lorna's lovely presentation, this horrible picture. <laughs> And the picture was, do you, did you see the 75-year-old director of plan giving on her slides, right? This was my nightmare from when I was a 26-year-old just starting out in gift planning. This old guy with white hair uh, in a three-piece suit. <laughs> uh, and Frank always used to say, often they're former bankers. And I'm thinking, wait, I now work at a bank. <laughs> started out of the charity. So, you know, that was a bit of a crisis moment, and I was wearing a three-piece suit. So, I thought to myself, and the question is, uh, as charities face the question of preservation and survival, what do they keep and what do they discard? Well, the first thing that I would propose that they discard <laughs> is is uh, a fear of change, a fear of change. <laughs> Wait, please. Uh, it's absolutely essential. Change is disruption. Uh, disruption is terrifying. But it's a classic case that as charities, as workers, as charities, as workers in the sector generally, if we're not causing and pushing the change, we will be steamrollered by the change. The second point. <laughs> that I think we should discard <laughs> is, uh, is our fear of collaboration. Obviously, this is a major theme, that's, uh, and it is there. We, uh, we have a fear of collaboration. We have a natural competitiveness. And in a room full of fundraisers, competition is positive and natural. But there's an attitude, a spirit around collaboration that's absolutely essential in the sector. I think it's embodied in an association like this. It's embodied how we can and should work with each other. And it's going to mean organizations with scale. They're going to come together more to meet these larger questions, to get to root causes. Not that we always can, Bill. But to, uh, we need resources that's going to come from greater collaboration, and it's going to come from greater collaboration within the sector. Third thing to discard. Now, this is the challenge, of course. <laughs> the third thing to discard is not the microphone. <laughs> there is always risk. And you have to address it. It's working. Third thing to discard is outmoded fundraising techniques. It's the vest. Is that direct mail? Is that, in the gift planning world, those charitable remainder trust brochures? Uh, what do we need to do to rethink how we do things. Are we relevant? Are we up to date? Have we been reviewing what our programs are all about? Are we actually doing something or are we being stuck, caught in history? Ah, now we have more problems. So, <laughs> discarding. <laughs> One step further. It's always the wardrobe malfunctions. Hold on, a little bit of yoga here. your time for this one. So one of the things that I think is essential, and this is very much borrowed from Susan, is I think as a sector we need to make sure that we discard our fear of advocacy, advocacy, speaking out. We have tremendous, tremendous, tremendous knowledge in the sector. We need to be active participants in the Canadian narrative to address social needs. Absolutely essential. We have to make sure we discard this fear, and particularly coming out of the whole uh, focus on political activities, this is something that we shouldn't respond to chill. We should make sure that, that it's an essential part of the sector. There is one final point here. What do we discard? We discard, we want three more. No, Norman, no. Absolutely not. 
One final point. We need to discard the beggar mentality. We need to focus on impact. We need to focus on adequate resources. We need to focus on making sure that the real work around mission gets done. We are solution providers. We're not beggars. So, what do we need to keep? And you're saying, please keep something. <laughs> Three points. At heart, we need to have that sense of mission, that sense of public benefit. And I think that it's constant sort of refresh. Bring it back to why the hell are we there? Who are we as charities? What are we doing? The second point, we need to keep and honor and recognize that we have incredible talent within the sector. I'm constantly just flabbergasted by that. Uh, and, but we're also facing a leadership crisis in terms of demographic change and things like that. We need to make sure that that's built and grown because the people that we have are absolutely essential, the experience and the knowledge. I think this is underappreciated in broader society. And the final thing that we need to keep, and yes, we are keeping, <laughs> as I get down to my more essential self, <laughs> and, and this, no, and I don't need the podium, I'm willing to stand before you, <laughs> is a sense of tremendous moral urgency, passion. Damn it, we have to have that passion. We have to have that gut feeling inside. We have to have the drive. We don't do this work because it's just another job. We do it because we believe in it deeply. We want to achieve those positive public outcomes. We want to get to root causes. We want to address issues. That's why we do it. And if you lose that, you forget it, we're gone. We're done for. Thank you. Thank you.